Hello again, this is David Rankin with Rankin Studio. Today we're going to be looking at some planetary image processing. Um, this is uh, can be kind of challenging at times, and if you don't understand some of the basic concepts, it can be a little bit confusing. So here's an image that I got of Jupiter on January 2nd, 2012. It's inverted, so the southern hemisphere is at the top. That's just aesthetic thing. If you would like this data to follow along with the video, just PayPal me you know five dollars and I will send you the videos via my website and you can follow along if not the techniques in the video will be pretty much universal so you know you can use these on any videos you're able to capture um, I'm not gonna say these are the best techniques these are just the ways that I've kind of come to after screwing around with a lot of different software um, you know the the idea here is just to get you introduced to the to the concepts and then you know you, you'll probably end up developing your own techniques so I've ran these three raw videos through a free program called Castrator. So what it does is it cuts the extra area out of the video, which reduces the file size. This is the red channel. Um, I filtered the light in the optical train and used a true monochrome CCD camera. You get a lot more resolution with monochrome than you do with color cameras. You can still create amazing results with color cameras, but I prefer monochrome because you do get a lot more resolution because every pixel is going to be dedicated to whatever wavelength of light you're shooting uh, versus you know every third or fourth pixel on a Bayer array which is pretty much a color camera um, you get a lot better resolution with monochrome the image is going to be going in and out of focus quite a bit because of the atmosphere moving around so the idea here is that we're going to take these images uh, the red green and blue images and we're going to stack them in a free program called Registax and what it's going to do is it's going to look at this video and it's going to it's going to kind of use some algorithms to pick out the sharpest frames and and it's going to fix the distortion that's taking place and it's going to stack those together to remove the noise and then you can go through and sharpen the image and the results are amazing uh, you can take a, what you would think is a pretty bad video and get some pretty sharp images out of it so let's get started working in Registax here So here's the interface of Registax. It's kind of strange if you're not used to it, but uh, if you follow along the video, you're going to get a feel for how it works. Um, it kind of moves forward through the steps with the main tabs up top, and then each tab has sub options, you know, for different processing methods you can use. First thing you can do is select the castrator video that uh, has been resi not resized but cropped, um, and then you're going to scrub through the scrubber down here and find a sharp frame. This frame is going to be the reference frame. So to find a, a point at which the atmosphere was kind of steady where a lot of details were coming through of course it's going to take a little while because it changed a little bit so okay I like that one so I'm going to go with this one um, <clears throat> minimum distance between points on this one is 25. The minimum distance from the edge is 10. The intensity selection is default. Um, and we have a low of 18, a high of 230. Uh, number of align points. You know, this is a slider you can mess with. Um, you can set it manually here. Um, align box size is 30. Align point movement is 5. Um, so, depending on how much resolution you have, how big the planet is on the sensor, what planet you're shooting, you're going to have to kind of tweak these settings and just kind of get a feel for it. Uh, it's hit and miss, just a matter of getting familiar with it. So this works well for this video. So I'm going to go ahead and just set align points on this frame that I found that was a sharp frame. So sometimes you have to hit it more than once to get, you know, a good selection. So just keep that in mind. Then you just hit align. So it's going to work through the alignment down here, progress bar. Okay, so the alignment is now complete. Um, so now this scrubber bar becomes a pretty much a clipping bar. You're gonna, you know, you're gonna. It's sorted the frames from worst to best, and um, so this is where you can limit the bad frames or just cut them out of the video. But this is not the point that I like to do this at. So I'm just gonna run it all the way to the right to make sure that I have 1,000 of 1,000 frames selected, and then hit limit. And then that's gonna run us into the next tab. So we went from align to stack up top. And in the stack tab, you can see there's quite a few different settings. You don't really mess with, need to mess with anything under Create AVI. 
the main stack options are right here um, so these are the options that I tend to use uh, the stack size is default uh, you know three four they use nearest by line points uh, normalization of frame intensity and correct geometry I usually select these two um, so this is where I'm gonna limit the video as well so I'm gonna grab the up top here the stack graph and you can see uh, the different frame quality jumping up and down here so if you grab the slider on the left and pull it down it's gonna start clipping the bad frames out of the video and you know, I'm gonna get it right about to the top of the majority of the frames here so you can see that's the mean pretty much the mean good quality of the video right there you can grab it from the back side here and pull it in as well to clip bad frames on this side because it sorts the frames so the quality is going to drop as you head to the right um, so you can you can also clip those but I usually don't mess with that so from here what I'm going to do again check over the settings um, just hit stack easy enough and it's going to go through and the 740 some odd frames that I selected it's going to only use those it's going to correct the geometry of those it's going to normalize the intensity and it's going to stack them together to remove the noise so you should end up with a pretty neat looking smooth image here but it's fairly blurry so the next step is to run into the wavelets tab and sharpen this image to get some details out and you're gonna be really surprised by how much detail is gonna come out of this okay so here's the wavelets um, what we have is the default settings the initial layer is one I've set it to two the Gaussian wavelet filters selected and I'm going to use link wavelets and so if you pull the top slider in you're going to get finer detail sharpened and if you pull the bottom slider in you're going to get larger detail sharpened and um, so the best thing to do is just mess around with this a lot to kind of get a feel for how it works but you can see the details that start coming out are pretty pretty fantastic so of course you can overdo it so you got to be careful with that I'm really liking how this looks I don't want to go too far with it um, you can see it's pretty noisy so I'm going to run a denoise on the sixth layer. A denoise on the sixth layer, and that that'll uh, kind of smooth it out a little bit. And there's a lot of a lot of really good details coming out in the red channel here. Um, after you're happy with the processing on it, you know you have all these other options over here: the gamma, the you know flip and rotate. Um, you can if you have an RGB image, you can align the the color channels. Um, we're gonna create the RGB image in Photoshop. So anyway, so just run a do all and then that'll sharpen the entire image if it hasn't already and then save the image so I'm gonna put it on my desktop as Jupiter Red with the time and the castrator tag at the end so there it is uh, you're gonna go through and do this for the red green and blue channels the pretty much the exact same method and when you're done with that you're gonna have three images that uh, that look pretty sharp the red and the, the green and the blue are not gonna be as sharp as the red but they they should look a lot better than what you saw in the video so uh, from there we can run them into Photoshop and then we can start you know, processing in Photoshop and then stack them. So here we go. All right, so here we are in Photoshop with the three images out of Registax. You can see the blue; it's not quite as sharp as the red. The green is somewhere in between. Um, that's because of the wavelengths of light. Shorter wavelengths tend to scatter more in the atmosphere when you're shooting. So generally, you can get a pretty good red channel, but if the scene conditions aren't great you're not gonna have a great blue channel so this is average scene a little bit above average maybe um, so we're gonna run a little bit of pre-processing on these images before we combine them for our final red green blue image what I like to do is kinda clip the backgrounds of the images so uh, grab the gray slider pull it in with the levels tool toward the black slider and you can see the background lights up real nice and then clip the background with the black slider by pulling it in and then pull the gray slider back to drop the brightness of the disk back down. I've done this on the green and blue channels already and then just a filter despeckle on each of the channels to help reduce the noise a little bit more um, and we're ready to combine the images now so these are black and white images that are representations of the colors that you shot so this is blue green and red we're gonna select the blue channel layers background make sure you have all channels selected well I guess it doesn't really matter but just make sure you have the background selected control a control C to select all and copy run over to the red channel and then on the red channel under channels you're gonna paste 
the blue channel as the blue for the red channel and this starts building your red green and blue image so now it's different than it was this is actually the blue channel for the red now you can do the same thing with the green control a control c run over to the red channel and then paste it as the green channel for the red image so now you actually have the red channel becomes the rgb image you leave the red as the red you paste the green and the blue in and you have your rgb image under the red channel so if you zoom in you can start aligning the three color channels because they're probably not going to be aligned right and um, this can be a little bit of a pain what I do is deselect the blue and then select just the green with the red also turned on so the blue is turned off and the red and the green are turned on but I'm gonna select the green and then grab the move tool and then so what you can do is kinda of just start pulling it around and you can see as you go off it starts to get blurry and the highlights are all wrong it looks like a 3d image like when you wear those glasses but uh, if you get it just right you shouldn't have any weird highlighting happening um, you may end up with a little bit of highlights on the left or the right because Jupiter spins so fast that in order to line the details up correctly you're gonna have to have a highlight on one side just because of the rotation of the planet even if you shoot within a two or three minute window you're still gonna capture some rotation so uh, just kinda tweak it around until it looks looks pretty tight and then grab your blue and the blue will create a yellowish highlight when it's not aligned right so just pull it around until it looks about right of course you can grab the red if you need to and move it too so looks pretty good zoom actual pixels uh, select deselect layers make sure that under your channels that the RGB is selected the entire image each channel is selected and then you can start processing the colors because the color balance is going to be off depending on your exposures if there wasn't the same exposure for red green and blue your color balance is going to be a little bit off so you need to set the white balance in the image I usually use this white stripe in the middle to do that so adjustments levels the gray slider and then select somewhere on this side and it'll it'll look natural once you get you'll want to select a gray somewhere in the image and it, and it should give you pretty accurate colors um, if you open up the info window just look for RGB values that are the same so that's 49 50 and 50 um, so if you can get the RGB values the same and then select that as the gray point should give you a pretty solid gray so pretty solid color adjustment that looks pretty good so now I'm gonna grab the curves tool and adjust the curves a little bit here so give a little bit more contrast you don't want to blow out the whites it's pretty good um, and you can always go back and realign the color channels if you need to if they're not looking just right it's good to do a little sharpen on it as well a sharp mask and you want to just play with this until you get a satisfactory setting if you overdo it you're gonna end up with a lot of noise but you can get some good details out and then with the unsharp mask done run another de speckle on the noise should smoothen it out a little bit it's okay to have a little bit of noise and um, yeah it looks pretty good if you get tired of looking at it one way for too long you can flip it and that'll give it a little bit more of a It'll kind of trick your brain into thinking it's a new image so you can see immediately if anything stands out that's wrong looks like my green channel needs to be tweaked just a little bit more so I'm gonna grab my green channel turn the other ones on so the green is selected and this is a slight adjustment so I'm just gonna use the up arrow and then the over arrow and you can see that looks much better so um, I like that 
And yeah, so that's that's pretty pretty well aligned image there. Processing looks good. You can crop it to get rid of the border. And then generally what I'll do is just tweak it a little bit more because it's good when it's twisted a little bit. You'd have to fill your background in with black to keep that looking good. But those are my methods for processing. Um, it can be a challenge, and again, you're going you're gonna to kind of learn as you go along, and you'll probably develop your own little techniques here and there. One plugin that I really like is called Astra Image. It's $30 um, plugin for Photoshop, and it does a really good job at sharpening these images. Got the large details, medium details, very large details. I don't know. Just the fine details, getting fine details teased out really make a really large difference in the quality of the final product. See, just another tweak with the Astra image, and you get even more detail out. And then you can upsample it a little bit. Percentage on the image size change it to 120 and that'll up, up sample by 120 percent and um, you know it held up pretty nice to that so again if you would like uh, if you would like the raw data just PayPal me five dollars and you can have it if not hopefully these techniques will help you uh, with your processing and um, you know if you have any tips or anything like that shoot me an email thanks